Many thanks for your company. Welcome back to the marketplace. The year-on-year -year inflation rate for the month of November has gone up to 8.2% from 7.7% in October. The increase is influenced by the marginal rise in prices of food and alcoholic beverages over the period. The current rate represents a difference of 0.5%. Of Here's government statistician Professor Samuel Kovina Emini. CPI for November 2019 was 109.7 relative to 109 in October 2019. So from a month-on-month -month perspective, CPI has gone up by 0.7 units. Year-on-year -year inflation, that is annual inflation rate for November 2019, was 8.2%. This literally can be interpreted as general price levels between November 2019 and November 2018 have gone up by 8.2%. Further to this, month-on-month -month inflation, that is monthly inflation, in which case we compare October 2019 and November 2019, shows that there's a difference of 0.7%. That is, general price levels have gone up by 0.7% between the month of October 2019 and November 2019. To put these figures in a context we share with you, the year-on-year -year inflation for October 2018 and October 2019. And for October 2018 and October 2019, as we presented last month, the year-on-year -year inflation was 7.7%. Relative to the year-on-year -year inflation for November 2018 and November 2019, there's a 0 0.5 difference. In the context of a monthly inflation rate, for September 2019 and September and October 2019, we recorded a monthly change of 0.4%. Again, comparing this to October 2019 and November 2019, which recorded a change of 0.7%, one can adduce to a 0.3 difference between September 2019 and October 2019 relative to October 2019 and November 2019. Now the Ministry of Finance is partnering the Christian community to improve the collection of taxes. According to Finance Minister Ken Furiata, the ratio of GDP to taxes is still low at 12.9%. Speaking after the launch of a collaboration between the two entities, Mr. Furiata explained that faith-based organizations will help reach out to their members by sensitizing them on taxes and encouraging defaulting public to pay their taxes regularly. The launch of the collaboration between government and the Ghanaian Christian community brought together about 350 representatives from the various faith-based organizations, FBOs, in the country. The collaboration, among other things, is to recognize and improve the contribution of FBOs to the national development as they play a crucial role in society. Key among the targets of the Ministry of Finance for this collaboration is the aim to broaden the tax net. Finance Minister Keno Foriata explained that the ministry through the churches will sensitize various congregations on the need to pay taxes. The FBOs have over 30,000 branch network, if you want to say. And um, um, supposedly every Sunday, you know, um, some millions of Christians meet in churches. So the question is whether we can begin to infuse um, the issue of the responsibilities of a citizen uh, in the way in which um, uh, we preach, um, the sermons we give um, uh, as to what the republic means and what the citizen's responsibility is, the need for taxes to develop ourselves. Uh, and the way to give to Caesar what to Caesar's. The Ministry of Finance says it will begin a roadmap on the collaboration next year, as well as launch a similar agreement with the Islamic community. For Joy Business, Karin Dudu. Now, economist and head of finance at the University of Ghana Business School, Professor Gottfried Bokwin, is calling on government to rationalize some tax exemptions in order to rake in revenues for capital investments. Speaking on the sidelines of the Ghana Integrity Business Forum, organized by the Ghana Integrity Initiative in Accra, he maintained the introduction of some reforms in the country's public sector would strengthen confidence in the economy. He's also been speaking about the need to ensure fiscal discipline. There is no point in undermining the fundamentals through the, uh, the, 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 the kind of if indiscipline that we tend to accommodate of budget expenditures and all of because sometimes those excesses do not go to the productive sectors of the economy and then once we are done with the election the inflationary expectations from there can no longer be unexpected 
I heard you speak briefly about decoupling development from elections. Yes, so, yes, because we, the election has gotten too much into our heads, into everything that we do, that sometimes we tend to delay development and, 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 and push it so closer to the election because seeing is believing and all of that. We have to be, because our democracy should mature by now, such that if you are in government and, and something has to be done in year one, there's no point in saying, let's wait and do it in year three or year four. Because the point is that we need all these things to ease the restrictions on the growth drivers of the private sector. Because when Ghana grows and Ghana develops and it benefits all of us, it's for all of us. There's a lot we have to do, especially at the macro level, to ensure that when we talk about enabling environment, that will guarantee private sector leadership as engine of growth and employment creation. We actually back it with practical meaning. And more importantly, because the call is on government to, to increase its capital spending. Of course, we understand the difficulties, but there's still there's a lot of room for government to collect a lot more tax revenue. Now, some aggrieved customers of collapsed savings and loans companies have expressed their disappointment at how government has treated them with regards to payments of their locked-up funds. They want government to form a consolidated savings and loans company to address their issues, as has been done for customers of universal banks and investment companies. We are made up of the depositors of the 23 um, savings and loans and finance houses whose licenses were revoked by the Bank of Ghana on the 16th of August this year. In fact, we've been through a lot for the past over one and a half years. And since the government came to take over, we thought everything was going to be in a hurry or it's going to be expedited. Until quite recently, that we started after the submission of the POD forms, we heard that the government was only going to pay a cap amount of 10,000 cities to us, no matter the quantum of money you have been locked up there. So we started some kind of agitation. During that time, we hadn't been able to form such a united front. So we were, we were going from radio station to radio station and sometimes information center to information center. To extend that, we even uh, appealed to the government to try and do something about that capped amount and also make sure that that deadline that was put on the submission of the POD be revoked. God being so good, that call was heeded to, and that deadline has been revoked. So now there's no deadline attached. But the cap one, the cap amount, has now been increased from 10,000 to 20,000. It's not enough. Because I know of some customers whose funds are over 1 million Ghana cities, some are over even 5 million Ghana cities. To the extent that if you are going to pay somebody whose money is being locked up to the team of 1 million to 5 million, an amount of just 20,000, we see it as, 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 excuse my language, as an insult. To the extent that we are equally Ghanaians as those in the universal banks whose funds were consolidated into forming the consolidated bank, the CBG. So we saw that it is necessary that we form such a united front and henceforth pursue our agenda of retrieving all our locked up funds from these institutions, which have been taken over by the government on the 16th of August 2019. To the extent that we are appealing to the government that if possible, it should also consolidate us. Shout now to my colleague Prince Apia, who attended the press briefing earlier for some more updates. Prince, you're welcome to the market, please. Thank you very much, Shima. All right, so what else have the aggrieved uh, customers of the defunct banks been saying? Okay, so what they are saying is that um, just like how the um, universal banks, customers of the universal banks have been treated with the consolidated bank coming into force, absorbing them and putting their payment structures in a certain scheme, they want seem to be done for customers of the savings and loans and microfinance. And this particular group I'm talking about uh, um, customers of the 23 savings and loans 
and finance houses whose um, licenses were revoked um, on the 16th of August 2019 and uh, this year. So what they are saying is that if the government can do that, that will be very good for them because as of now, they only have to rely on text messages from um, the authorities before they can go to any of the banks to, to re make any re withdrawal. And, of, and again, they are saying that there is a cap on the um, amount they can receive. That is 10,000 Ghana cities with more than that amount of money in the lockdown fund, and they don't um, expect only 50,000 to be paid to them. They want that um, particular cap to also be taken up. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Prince Apia, it looks like we cannot continue. We have a poor feed out there from Kumasi, but it's been touching on uh, the decision by customers of aggrieved savings and loans companies, the defunct one of, ones, of course, who have, uh, who have appealed to government to set up a consolidated savings and loans account, just as has been done for the universal banks. Now, for this year's Christmas, you will have a cool juice as one of the many drinks on the market. The first factory inaugurated under the One District One Factory project has started its commercial production of 100,000 boxes of fruit juice a day. Julian Tiama was at the factory and says the price will not go beyond one city 50 pesos. Close to two years ago, on the Joy Business Van, we focused our lenses on Daniel Kwating, a young farmer whose project had been selected for the One District One Factory. Getting about $5 million to start a factory from the China Engzim Bank to be paid over a seven year period. From this project, 5,000 outgrowers and 400 factory hands from Ekumfi were expected to be employed. With its over 1,000 hectares of pineapples were to be cultivated for the first phase and then 5,000 hectares later. Farmers expressed their joy over this new factory, which will save their ideal rotten pineapples in the farms. We send our produce to Sawam. They take 70%. Then the rest is taken by market women. But majority gets rotten. Then in 2017, the president commissioned the project to commence. On Saturday, 18th June 2016, a little over a year ago, I campaigned in the Ejumaku Enyan ACM constituency as part of my five-day campaign tour of the Central Region. I announced at a mini rally at Ejumaku that if I won the election, the government under my leadership would embark on an industrialization agenda with the aim of transforming the structure of the Ghanaian economy from one dependent on the production and export of raw material to a value-added industrialized economy. I indicated that my government, in partnership with the private sector, would establish one factory in each of the 216 districts across the country. One district, one... They took a look at our current capacity. That was the first thing they looked at. They decided how much raw material do we actually have on the ground. They came to the farms, we did initial assessments, and, you know, the truth of the matter was, on the ground, we as a company did not have everything we needed to feed this factory. The Ekonfi Fruit Processing Company can process 180,000 fruits in a 12-hour working day. Having found out that the farm, one farm alone cannot meet it, they decided to involve our growers. Yes, so with the financing structure, it's developed around two major platforms. Developing capacity from the farms, 
internally generated fruits, and then developing capacity from the our growers in the open field area. Where this factory sits now was ground zero. I'm currently on the project site of where the one district, one factory um, program is supposed to initially start. Well, this land that is currently being prepared is about 50 acres. Just about 10 of it will be used for the initial factory that should be churning out uh, some products of about 180,000 fruits. I have been following the story for the past two years and I've come to verify. Fresh pineapples have been brought in here to be crushed into juice. 10,000 pieces of pineapples are crushed in here every hour, making it 80,000 pieces in an eight hour shift. Not only are pineapple juices being made, but in these two tanks, passion fruits and citrus, together with ginger, will be added for other flavors. We also have plans because we're going beyond pineapple to one of our brands is a pineapple with ginger, we call it pine ginger. So we will source the ginger, currently we are sourcing the ginger third party, but uh, we have plans to do the squeezing in-house. So we have another plant on the other side, now we have a lot of space here. We have another plant on the other side to do the squeezing. But we want to be sure of what we are putting in the box or in the can for our customers. And the same way for, for passion fruit, when we have in citrus, when we have to do the pine tropic. And the pine tropic is a pineapple based so with citrus and passion fruit. So we have had all that arrangement and we roll them all out. But the introductory product is the equi juice pineapple. Well, so sometimes when you buy juice and uh, um, you take it, especially pineapple juice, you see, and you put it down, you see that kind of separation. So the pineapple um, pulp is down there, and then there's some water on top. In order for them to avoid this at the Confit Juices factory, they decided to get a homogenizer that sort of like bonds all the materials together so that you do not have that separation. So I decided to take a test. Um, to make sure that what they were saying was actually really true. So I'm just pouring this, wow, this is quite a lot. Pouring this into the glass and then want to see the kind of effect um, I will have. Well, from the glass, you can tell that the way the top looks like it's just how the bottom looks like and so the whole thing has bonded nicely uh, making life easier well so let me be one of the first to really take taste echo fruit juice this is really good for a shelf life of six months the pineapple is also pasteurized here and sterilized to avoid bacteria from the production process. From here, fruits are packaged. Laser sensitive equipment is affixing expiry dates and batch numbers on the drinks. Next week, the drinks will be in the market, and about 40% of production outside the country by the year 2020, together with canned juices. At the, at the table, we can get the price. But it will be very competitive. I, I mean, when you get um, um, some juice that does the same packaging, one of this, by the time it's getting to the end user is about um, a one city 50 pesos. So are you going to do anything lower than that since we're looking at it from the Ghanaian market? Sure, we're looking at the um, our cost of putting it in the market and we're looking at competition as well. What we are, pro we are providing to the market is pure fruit juice. Juice coming from the fruit itself with no additives. But I bet you we're going to be very competitive. At full capacity, 1,000 hectares of pineapples will not be enough. But the company has a plan. Well, as you can remember from the early days that we used to do the reading with you, we had targets of, um, of 10 tons per hour as our processing capacity. 
a interpretation of 10, 10 tons per hour is 10,000 foot. So if we are working on a normal eight hour shift, we need 80,000 foot to do that. 80,000, we are talking about 400 acres of pineapples. How many acres do you have? Oh, we have close to 1,000 now uh, because you know we, we would enter pro production and then begin to stagger into the market. So it wasn't too good beginning. But we have an actual annual um, uh, capacity or annual projection of uh, 5,000 acres. But per our, pr our plan and programs, we're going to have this achieved between the third and the fifth year. So we have planned to do about 1,000 before we begin production and then to roll over as, as we, uh, we move along. And that's exactly what is happening. So we have enough uh, to begin with. We're praying that we have um, acceptability generally so we can do a very good offtake and then we can begin to continue to produce. We're pushing, you know, to try and get more foreign partners involved with us to be able to meet the requirements necessary. And we are hoping that the market will be very responsive to us because the fact is the product is of very high quality, superior to most countries and what they are producing. That's one obvious fact that Ghanaian farmers have. We produce superior quality. Market is also a very important thing, you know. Um, with the Chinese market, it's growing. It's, there's huge demand. The truth is Europe also has a lot of demand, but the pricing may not be ideal for us right now. To be honest, the Chinese are offering better prices now for their products. And um, the government, through a lot of uh, efforts, have created these marketing channels. You know, they're creating a lot of conferences where farmers can meet uh, importers of fresh food, where farmers can sit down with um, uh, these buyers. The expectation of this factory in the central region are enormous and it's clearly stated by the central regional minister. The subsistence grower will no longer be doing it as they have been doing. Now they have the assured and ready market. What it means is this, that if they had excess land, now they stand in a good set to expand. Expanding means that you're going to do more economic activity. More is going to come into your pocket. Not only that, from the value addition, now you are creating a whole value chain. And so it is not even just the people of the Kumbi. You have many others who will be coming from the rest of the region to be employed as uh, factory hands. Now when the factory is up and doing and adding value to the raw pineapple, other related services are also going to come in. In back to our crowd, we draw down the curtains on today's edition of the marketplace. Many thanks for your company. My name is Imano Abwaiti. We are here. Have a good day.